Hello, my name is Eddie Tofpik. I'm Head of Technical Analysis and Senior Market Analyst at ADM Investor Services International Limited. And here is your weekly technical analysis of Kansas City and Minneapolis wheat markets. I'll start with Kansas City wheat. The low water mark of the 18th of August was pivotal to the construction of what happened next here. Back then the market failed to break down through the neckline, currently 821, of the big old 50% Fibonacci line of the October 2021 to January 2022 move. The market chose instead to construct a new pattern, a bull channel, currently 1032 to 1091. This was easy enough to do once prices overcame the short medium moving average, currently 938. Now remember this moving average, it will pop up again later on. There was a small free zone above at the time, all the way up to the July 2012 high at, 19, at 957. However, when the market reached the 957 area, I thought there might be issues. You see, 957 is the gateway to a congestion area above between 957 even to 1001 even area, roughly, within which sits the slowly rising long moving average, currently 998. A lot of this congestion was made up from 2011 and 2012 and was easily breached on the way up in February and on the way down in June. However, back in those days, they did not have the additional reinforcement of the long moving average in their midst. And it is this, along with the upper bull channel line, that constrained the market topside three weeks ago. In the process, the market took on a new shape, primarily caused by the weekly key reversal down made that same week. In fact, it's hard to judge if the shape became the weekly key reversal down or, or vice versa. Anyway, at the end of that week, the market broke down through the lower bull channel line. Plus it dropped out of the overhead resistance area and even started moving below the declining medium moving average for a while, currently 923. Then along came this week, a week of time wasting, but also a week of defining industry. This is a parallel of what we saw in Chicago wheat. I'll expand on this shortly, but first I would like to look at part of my commentary from last week that is still seemingly valid, and I quote, Much like Chicago wheat, though it's not a complete duplicate, this market has two avenues, though there will no doubt be more available eventually. The first is the straightforward move down with the potential targets for the bull channel. Thus we have a primary target X down in the 903 zone, whilst the secondary harder to reach target X1 is way down below in the 759 zone. The market's not too far away from target X right now. This leads to the second avenue. It is the possibility for the whole of the July to date action being not just a flat bottom, but a flat bottom with an extension. Extensions have something like a bull flag within them, and that is what may just be being built here ever since mid-August. Personally, it looks a little slack as a pattern, but, and it is an untested but, but if the short medium moving average manages to hold the market up, and I will add this week target X at 903 to that list, if Eva manages to hold, hold up the market and we then see prices revert back up, well, then this second scenario, the larger bottom of an extension, suddenly looks a lot more interesting. End of quote. I finally come to this week's action. It has been much like Chicago week. You see, the early part of the week saw the beginnings of a gapping higher leg, leg up in a possible flat bottom pattern with an extension. In this case, more a slack bullish halfway hesitation and a bull flag inside the extension. However, the reversion back down midweek countered that move, or so it seemed. What it did show was the continuing bearish influence of the long moving average. It is still a strong force overhead. Additionally, yesterday's dip below the short medium moving average and a halt at what looks like the strongest support of the medium moving average with today's small um, attempted reversion back up. Well, that shows that the support below also still looks good. So we know that these two congestions, one above and one below, are still good. We have learned that again, but apart from that, we haven't learned anything new. We, for example, are still not sure if the flat bottom with an extension is true. It still looks like it, but nothing this week has helped or hindered that idea. Minneapolis wheat. Over July and August, we'd seen a sideways to lower channeling market and not as exciting as earlier in the summer. In early September, we saw the start of another bullish pattern. 
seems to have been prompted by the approach at the steep angle from above of the short medium moving average, currently 950. And rather than this moving average acting as a cap on any rise, it instead acted as a trigger for a move higher. Remember this moving average, it will show up again later. This move higher seems to have been slower than in other grains, but prices did start moving in early September into a new bullish pattern. This is a nice segue into the bull channel come ascending expanding wedge pattern formed um, until early October, currently 10.57 to 11.56. I previously called this construction rudimentary, not only because it was then rudimentary, but also because this market is, as I've said earlier, was way behind, way, way behind both Chicago and Kansas City wheat in its construction. You only need to look at where the flattening long moving average were at back in, well, back currently at 1035 and the declining medium moving average currently at 952, which incidentally has seemingly triggered the move lower in early October. Look back at those until this week and you only need to see the relative positions of these moving averages compared to the same moving averages in other grain markets to appreciate, how shall I put it, how inferior the actions here have been. Anyway, as I said earlier, from three weeks ago, the market broke down through the lower trend line of the bull channel come ascending expanding wedge pattern. This now leaves us with the same two avenues that I can see here as well as in Chicago and Kansas City. Though there will, I'm sure, eventually be more scenarios available. The first is a straightforward move down with potential targets for the bull channel come ascending expanding wedge pattern. Thus, we have a primary target X on the downside quite a way lower compared to the other grain markets in the 883 zone whilst the secondary harder to reach target X1 is down in the 840 zone. This leads to the second avenue. It is a possibility for the whole of the July to date action to be a sort of rounded bottom, and a rounded bottom with an extension. These extensions have something like a bull flag within them, and that was what I suspected may have been constructed here since early September. Personally, it looks a little slack as a pattern, but here is the key. If the previously mentioned short medium moving average that acted support as recently as yesterday, or even the 50% Fibonacci line of the August 20 to May 2022 move at 955, if they do manage to hold the market up, and then we may, may, just may, see the opportunity for prices revert back up, back up, then the second scenario, the larger rounded bottom of an extension, suddenly looks a lot more interesting. Now we come to this week's action. Much as in Chicago and Minneapolis week, all that we've seen is a verification of support at the 50% Fibonacci line at 9.55 and a short medium moving average, as well as the October highs and roundophobia of the $10 level. This week has neither added nor subtracted much from what has already been occurring. Thank you for listening. This weekly broadcast gives the essential market patterns and consequences. Please be aware of the risk disclaimer posted with this broadcast. Copyright is Eddie Topic and ADM Investor Service International Limited. And here comes the final bet.